Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. This is Law 254, your favorite legal show that seeks to demystify the law, give you useful tips and guidance on how you can interact with the law on a day-to-day -day basis, basically putting the law in your hands. I'm Wakili Kiti. I'm an advocate of the High Court. And today we want to dwell on children matters, all right? Uh, there's been push and pull between parents, the father of the child or the mother of the child, with the mother demanding for child support, and sometimes the father not providing child support or the mother demanding for exorbitant uh, child main maintenance that is not just and equitable for, for, for the father. So today I want to cover what is the right amount that a father ought to provide for their children or indeed a mother, either of the parents. What is the right amount? What is the quantum uh, of provision? And, and also cover the issue of parental responsibility. So, what is parental responsibility? And I know many of you think parental responsibility is just maintenance. Parental responsibility is a broader concept than just maintenance. Parental responsibility is the duties, the rights, the powers, the responsibilities that the parent has over the child or the child's property during the life of the child until he becomes, he becomes an adult. All right, and even when he becomes an adult, so sometimes parental responsibility still extends. And why is parental responsibility such an important concept? Parental responsibility is the pride that the parent has over the child, the pride of being a parent over the child comes to play. So it's the pride that the parent has over this child. So not anyone can just take parental responsibility over any child. You have to prove either of these uh, five situations. The first one is either you, you, you must have applied to court to acquire parental responsibility and through a court order you acquire that responsibility. Two, you, either you have uh, drafted a parental responsibility agreement as between yourself and the mother of the, of the child. Three, either you have stayed with the mother of the child subsequent to the birth of the child for accumulative duration of one year, then automatically you'll assume parental responsibility. Four, if you have agreed to paternity of that child, or if you have been subjected. So if you do not take parental responsibility, but you have been subjected to a DNA test and which proves that you're the father of the child, then you ought to acquire parental responsibility. And five is if you have uh, been maintaining the child prior, uh, subsequent to the birth of the child. So these are the only five situations under the Kenyan law that will make someone acquire parental responsibility. All right. Now let's go to the issue of the quantum. Out here, it is said that ladies nowadays use men as ATMs. They, by virtue of them having a child with you, they demand exorbitant amounts of money, uh, which doesn't go into maintaining the child, but goes into maintaining their lavish lifestyle. So today we want to uh, interrogate what is the right quantum of money that ought to be provided? Now, don't get me wrong. Anything revolving uh, the issues of children must be done in the best interest of the child. And as so long as you have a child, then you ought to take uh, parental responsibility. It, it, would, it, shouldn't be, it, should, it shouldn't get to the point where you're forced to take a DNA test so that you can assume parental responsibility. You ought to take parental responsibility. But the question that we want to answer today is not whether you take parental responsibility or not. It is the quantum of maintenance that is just and equitable in the circumstances. So there are ladies who will demand and harass and, and, and bug their, their co-parents to give exorbitant amount of money. Someone is demanded to give 100000 and maybe this person only earns uh, 50000 is that just and equitable? So we want to find out what are the guiding principles under the law that provide for arriving at this figure. And how can we as lawyers, specialists in family matters, help you balance these factors in arriving at a figure that is just and equitable? So the first issue that the court will consider is the liability of both parties. Under the law, parental responsibility is a 50-50 uh, responsibility between both parents. But 50-50 responsibility, as I said, just doesn't go to the financial element. It's a 50-50 responsibility, but it's not a 50-50 money-giving responsibility. 
all right? So the court will look at different, a myriad of factors in arriving at a figure that is just and equitable. The first one being the liability of either parent to provide for that child. So if, if as, as parents, both of you have a 50-50 uh, responsibility, but in the event one parent, say, is the custodial parent and is staying with the child, then this other parent will be expected to provide more financially because already this other parent has provided shelter and food and all these other uh, uh, other needs. The other thing that will be considered is the financial resources uh, or the I income earning capacities of either of the parties. So if one parent earns a lot more or has, or has a lot more wealth as compared to this other party, then he or she will be expected to provide more for the child in the circumstances. Uh, the, other, the third factor that will be considered is the financial needs and obligations that one parent has uh, with regards to uh, child provision. So it could be that you as the lady earn 100,000 and the gentleman also earns 100,000. But this gentleman has four other children. So the court will look at that circumstance and say, if you only have one child and this other person also has four other children outside your child, then he ought to provide an amount that will also not prejudice the other children. So the financial obligations of one of the partners will also be considered. The other issue is the physical and mental abilities of the child. There are children that are born with special needs uh, or disabilities. So they require uh, a, a special uh, special kind of attention. So the quantum of maintenance will also be higher if a child say is, is deaf or is blind and you need to make or is lame and you need to make uh, provision for certain facilities to make the child comfortable so that will also be taken into consideration so the other issue is the manner in which the child is expected is being or expected to be educated if you are a child of a prominent person say a president you are expected to be educated in a certain way there's a certain prestige there's a certain status that ought to be maintained so by virtue of your parents going separate ways your level of education uh, as per the expectation should not be prejudiced because of the splitting of your parents and that has a bearing on the quantum of of maintenance that ought to be provided so if also prior to the separation of your parents you're being educated in a certain school say Brookhouse, and now your parents are split the quantum will ought to be will be factored the, the quantum will be factored to maintain that certain uh, lifestyle the other factor that ought to be um, to be taken into account is you, the, the status of your other siblings. So this, this is more applicable when a child has been adopted. You can come into a family and then these other children have, have, have been ex exposed to a certain uh, level of lifestyle. So when you come in, you also ought to be exposed to that certain kind of lifestyle. And this will dictate the quantum of provision of the other uh, co-parent. Uh, the other m matter, of course, is whether parental responsibility has been assumed, which I had, had earlier hinted. So if parental responsibility has not been assumed, then even the quantum of maintenance is lower. If parental responsibility has been assumed, the, 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 the quantum of maintenance is higher. If parental responsibility has been assumed knowing that this is not your child, also the quantum of maintenance will go lower because there's another person who's liable to make uh, the provision for, for that particular minor. Parental responsibility, the, con the quantum of maintenance will also be affected by customs and religion. So there are other religions that call for specific forms of provision for children, especially the Islam religion, ETC. So religion could also, religion and customs could also influence the amount that uh, needs to be provided by either of the parties. Um, and the financial need, that this is also the, the other factor, the financial need of the child. The child could be of two years, uh, two years or one year, for heaven's sake, why are you demanding 100,000 for, for monthly maintenance when the child has, has not even started going to school? So these are some of the factors that the court will look into or we as, as, as lawyers will help you look into you, uh, to arrive at a figure that is just and, and equitable to the child. Remember, the best interest of the child is what is at the center of all this. So as a parent, if you have a child, you have to maintain them. So the question is not the maintenance, the question is, what is just? Is it unfair what the, the lady is demanding? But towards maintaining, you have to maintain them. So we as lawyers will help you do this. In court, each of the parents will be demand, will be ordered to file something called an affidavit of means. An affidavit of means simply tell, says this is the uh, amount of money that I earn, these are my expenses, and this is what I'm left with. So both parents will file that. 
uh, stipulating all their incomes and all their expenses and whatever it is that they are left with. So depending on what is left by both parents, the court will look and say, so you're left with 50,000 and you are left with, uh, say, 200,000. You can provide this without sweat and you can provide this without sweat. Of course, balanced within all the other factors that I've described. As a wakili, if you bring that case to me, I'll also be able to tell you, um, if you give me all the facts uh, between yourself and your co-parent, I'll be able to tell you that this figure is just undecutable. So if you are there, you found yourself in a situation where a lot more is demanded, a lot more than is reasonable is demanded for you to make provision for, for your child and you feel that it's unfair, we'll be happy to look at your situation and advise. So I hope I've been helpful, especially to men, because this most of the time falls on men. Uh, and even to women, if there's a man who's a deadbeat father who doesn't want to uh, make provision for your child, we can look at whether he should assume parental responsibility or whether we should subject him to uh, uh, parental responsibility using the legal ways. I hope I've been helpful. And uh, may God bless you. Kindly subscribe to our YouTube channel. We'll be dishing out free legal advice, uh, which might be helpful in your interaction with the law on a day-to-day -day basis. Cheers and may God bless you.